Greetings, beloved, and welcome to Narrowgate Channel. Another beautiful day our Father God has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in it. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I welcome those who just joined Narrowgate Channel. Let us learn together its operation. Give Jesus your 100%. In 2024, beloved, I am wrapping up all the messages that our Father has given me. And it's my last year on YouTube. Our Father is done, beloved. We serve a powerful God, the great I am, the one and only risen King, the only wise God. In Him I hid all the treasures of knowledge and wisdom. Hallelujah. Today I'm going to cover the book of Second Peter chapter 3. And it's going to be part 2 of the great and terrible day of the Lord. I have shared also known as the second coming. So I'm going to read the entire chapter 3 of Second Peter. It's not going to be long because we have covered almost everything. I just want you to understand that the world will be destroyed by fire. And this will happen during the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I will read from verse 1. The word of God says, This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostle of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that they shall come in the last days, scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. I will pause there for now. That is the powerful word of God, beloved. Peter said in the last days, know this first, that in the last days, scoffers shall come walking after their own lust. And we are in the last days. This is for our dispensation, beloved. And we have been experiencing it many times. The scoffers, when our Lord is speaking, they will be opposing, walking after their own lusts. When you tell them that Jesus is coming, they will tell you that we have been hearing it. Ever since we were born, our fathers have been hearing it. The word of God is powerful, beloved. It is all written in the word of God. As Peter mentioned, in verse 4, the word of God says that they will be saying, where is the promise of his coming? And these are the things that we are hearing. When we say that Jesus is at the door, they will tell you that I've been hearing that since I was born. The word of God says all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. And this is what they are telling us. That the world will continue. We have found it here. It will continue until we die. They don't want to hear about the coming of the Lord. They don't want to hear about the end of this world. It has been prophesied, beloved. Our Father knows the end from the beginning. Let us continue to verse 5. For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. Peter continued in verse 5 and reminded us of prior the floods. He said that they're ignorant, they have forgotten that God created the earth then by his word upon the waters and by waters he destroyed it. They have forgotten. And even during the time of Noah, they were being warned. 
but they did not listen. And the word of God says that it will be like that time of Noah, even in this dispensation. The word of God is powerful. Let us continue. Verse 7. But the heavens and the earth which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. He continued in verse 7. He said the heavens and the earth which are right now, the one that we have right now is reserved for fire on the day of judgment and the destruction of ungodly. It is reserved for fire. It's kept in store waiting for that great and terrible day of the Lord. When all humanity, the disobedient, will be destroyed as I have shared in part one. Let us continue to verse nine. The word of God says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, what? not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. In verse 8, Peter told us that a thousand years is like a day unto the Lord. So he is not slack to his promise. He wants each and every one to hear the gospel and to repent. Praise the name of the Lord. That is why many, they think that it's not going to happen. We have been hearing it many times. Our forefathers have been told that Jesus is coming. Yet we are still continuing each and every day. Praise the name of the Lord. Our Father does not want anyone to perish. Let us continue to verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In day which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. That is the powerful word of God, beloved. The day of the Lord will come as a thief, a day that is known by him when he shall come down to destroy the ungodly. Praise the name of the Lord. So we get to understand that during the second coming, not only that people will be killed, by the Lord, by the sword that will come out of the Lord's mouth. Remember those who took the mark of the beast. So we get to understand that the earth will be destroyed as well. The word of God says, In day which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also and the works that are they in shall be burned up. So everything is reserved for fire. So on the day of the Lord, everything will be burned up. That is what the word of God says, beloved. So we get to understand that the world will be destroyed during the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the great and terrible day of the Lord, which is known by the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Everything is in store, reserved for fire. Whatever people are working hard for, not having time for God, everything is reserved for fire. It will be burned up. Let's continue to verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, 
wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. That's the powerful word of God, beloved. So Peter said, now that you know that everything is reserved for fire, live holy. Set yourself aside for God. Dedicate your life to him. Everything is going to be destroyed. Live a holy life and wait patiently for the Lord. Listen to verse 12. He said, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God. Let us prepare ourselves. Let us look forward. Prepare for that day. Because everything is going to be destroyed. Great advice Peter left for the children of God. Praise the name of the Lord. He said, now that you know that the world is going to be destroyed, everything is in store, waiting for the judgment of God. It will burn the heavens and the earth. So let us prepare ourselves. Let us focus on him. Let us live a holy life. Because there is hope for his children. Look at what he said in verse 13. He said, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. The new heaven and the new earth, it's only for the righteous. That's why he said, now that you know what's going to happen, live a holy life, live a life of separation. To his children, we are not worried that the world is going to be destroyed by fire. We are hopeful because we know that this dark world that we are living in, the prince of this world has contaminated it. It will be destroyed and we will go to the new earth where righteousness dwelleth. Praise the name of the Lord. Again, in verse 14. He reminded us, beloved, the standard. Because many people believe that they are going to go to heaven. They are going to partake or they are going to be part of the new earth. Yet they do not want to obey his word. Let us listen to what Peter said in verse 14. He said, wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. That is the powerful word of God, beloved. It is those without spot or blameless that will be partakers of the new earth, that will be partakers of the promise. If you do not want to live a holy life and leave sin behind, you will not be part of this promise. Those mockers and scoffers are those who call themselves believers. When they hear the messages of God, they always have something to say. They want to oppose. They want to bring scriptures. The word of God says that they are walking after their own lust. Praise the name of the Lord. Therefore, how will God remove the spots in their garments? How will he remove the wrinkles from their raiment? Because they don't want to be taught. Therefore, they won't be partakers of the new earth. They won't be partakers of the promise. What a powerful advice Peter left for us. He said, now that you know that everything is in store for fire, waiting for judgment, and those 
who are destructive in their ways, the ungodly. He said, therefore, live a holy life. Separate from the world. Dedicate your life to the Lord. Surrender to him fully. The world will be destroyed, yes. But we are not in despair. To us, his children, we celebrate because we look forward to our promise of a new life where Satan will be bound for 1,000 years. What a joy, beloved, that we will be living without Satan. This corrupt earth that we are living in right now, it will be destroyed by fire on the day of the Lord. What a mighty God we serve, beloved. We will start on a clean slate. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. I will continue and read the rest of it from verse 15. And I count that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. I have shared from verse 15 up to 17 before a very sound advice that Peter left for us, beloved. Let us press on. Let us be encouraged. Praise the name of the Lord. My focus was up to verse 14. And my message was to reiterate that on the great and terrible day of the Lord, the earth and the heavens will be destroyed. If you notice, the scriptures will use the word heavens and earth. So we get to understand that there are other realms in the heavenly places. So those realms will be destroyed and Satan was cast down, remember, coming from one of those realms in Revelation chapter 12. He was cast down. The word of God says he came with great wrath, war unto the inhabitants of the earth. So those realms will be destroyed together with this earth that we are living in right now, that Satan has contaminated. Praise the name of the Lord. So the focus of my message was up to verse 14. So we know that during the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that is when the earth and the heavens will be destroyed by fire. Praise the name of the Lord. I will do a video of sequence of events once we are done. Praise the name of the Lord. So that's it for this message. I love you all. Stay blessed as we continue to learn. Bye-bye.